down. What's up, guys? This is Dave Van Auken once again, back again on the Fight Bananas Podcast. How's everyone doing out there? Happy Monday. Uh, happy July 4th weekend to you guys. Hopefully, you guys had a great, great weekend. Uh, we are in a weird time in life. Uh, some of the beaches closed are uh, here in Florida, especially where we live. But uh, we spent some time with some family, ate some hot dogs, had a couple cold drinks. You know, it was good. And uh, it was just great to, uh, you know, spend some time, just kind of relax. It was a the first Saturday in a while. No fights were on. So, uh, you know, it kind of made it easy for us here in uh, MMA land, uh, Fight Bananas community to uh, just, you know, relax, take the chill and uh, spend time with the family and you know, just have a good July 4th weekend. Uh, man, thank everyone uh, for our country and the freedoms and all of that nature that we can do things of uh, anything. Uh, we can protest. Uh, we can, you know, go to a movie theater now. Uh, we can create a podcast. We can create podcasts. Because um, inside the distance, I don't know if you guys saw, man, they had a, such a killer week. Uh, they're doing some great things. They're one of our brothers' uh, podcast here. Uh, that guy's wrestling podcast. So, so much. Bare Knuckles and Brews. Make sure to give them a follow. We are so pumped right now for our future and the rest of the summer 2020. Uh, a lot of people are going through hard times. Uh, the Fight Bananas are trying to do the best we can, and we're just trying to give you content, content, content. Uh, talking about that. Remember last week we had your boy Eric uh, Anders on and also Comma Worthy. And both of those podcasts were amazing, were awesome, uh, great downloads from you guys. So we appreciate it. We appreciate it. We're just going to keep it rolling. Um, sometimes we have some of the best UFC fighters on the planet on. And sometimes we just want to talk to some uh, new talent, some talent here in Florida. We're based here in Florida. You guys know that by now. Uh, we have the, um, Danny LaRassa who's coming on, who's going to be uh, co-main event in, I believe, XFN, uh, coming right around the corner. So um, he's fighting for a title, and uh, we, we're, we're just excited for him to come on the show. Uh, he's got a couple really, really good stories, how he got into MMA, and uh, we can't wait. So, uh, yeah, XFN's coming around the corner. Yeah, that's July 12th, uh, XFN29. That's live on that floatcombat.com. Uh, also, we might have another guest at the end of the show. Uh, it's in the middle. It's uh, middle of the year, right? We're in July 6th, I believe. Yeah, happy Monday to you guys. And so we might uh, have a think guy come on the show and just talk some MMA. So uh, we're so excited. We can't w- wait to keep it going. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, old podcast platforms, and keep the Fight Bananas momentum going. Let's talk to Too Blessed, Danny LaRussa. All right, guys, jumping on the Fight Bananas hotline, my main man, Too Blessed, Danny LaRussa. How you doing, my brother? Doing good, doing good. How about yourself, Dave? Man, doing great, doing great. We're just uh, we're running through July. We got the uh, XFN coming on July 12th, so let's really jump into that, and then we'll kind of rewind how you got into MMA and uh, you know the gym and all of that nature. But how pumped are you to be on this card? Big, big card, live on FlowCombat.com. Man, super excited, man. Main event, I uh, got a tough opponent. I'm looking forward to getting down there and getting dirty and fighting. Absolutely. It's for the Bantamweight Championship, right? Yes, sir. Ah uh, man, I'm a yes sir, yes sir, and I'm a huge bantamweight guy. I love it. Uh, a couple months back, UFC 250 had it was bantamweight showdown. Sterling, uh, Sugar Shane O'Malley, uh, you know, just tons of talent. Cody uh, No Love came back. Um, do you guys do you watch those high end um, bantamweight champions and uh, those superstars of the UFC and kind of take little bits and pieces from them? Yeah, I um, I love watching uh, Demetrius Johnson. I love watching Cody No Love. Uh, Sean O'Malley is another uh, another another freak that I love watching too. They they have you know they have a lot of great pointers. I love watching how you know how Demetrius Johnson you know works his ground game. That's one of the actual guys that I look you know look forward to watching every single time he fights. Now that he's in one championship, you know, it's a different story. But I've been watching him day one. Right, absolutely, and uh, I. When I mention bantamweights, there's always one name, and there's no middle ground, and that's one thing why I do like about this guy. Uh, you love him or you hate him. Are you a pro or a con Henry Cejudo guy? Oh, pro! I love Henry Cejudo. He's a he's a great wrestler. Always, uh, I've always seen him in in in, in the fights. Absolutely, man! I what a stud, one of the all timers. Uh, do you see him coming back in the future? You see him coming back to the UFC, uh, getting another big payday soon? Well, um. 
if I'm not mistaken, he, he left because he wanted to, you know, start a family, you know. So maybe, you know, once he's established and he, and he already got the routine of the family going, maybe he will come back. And, you know, I look forward to seeing that. Absolutely, man. He is. And it, that, I, I respect that a lot. I'm a father. I'm a father of four. Got two boys, two girls. And, uh, you know, the MMA is so important to me personally and uh, for my career. But at the end of the day, man, uh, you know, it's family first. I put the kids to, uh, to bed, you know, and all that. So definitely a big family guy. So I like that you mentioned that. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about you. That's how, how did you get into MMA? Let's talk about the gym. Uh, you know, I know you got a good story um, about uh, you back in the day, so I'd love for you to tell the Fight Bananas community that. Well, um, I pretty much, since a, since a kid, my that, my grandpa was actually a championship uh, boxer in uh, Cuba. So ever since I was a little kid, he grew me up, you know, bobbing and weaving, stepping forward, showing me all the footwork and stuff like that. Then later on towards, you know, high school, I got into wrestling, went to States twice for South Dade and Sunset. Um, and then after that, uh, when I got out of high school, I, cut, I, took, I took a little step back, had a kid, had a little baby girl. Um, great blessing and then after that i actually like when she was born i started jujitsu at evolution mma um it was funny because i i was lifting with my friend and um you know we made a bet to see who lasted longer in, in mixed martial arts and then as soon as i stepped into the to the gym uh the evolution gym i just fell in love with it and i was there every single day non-stop doing jujitsu uh, at first, my first jiu-jitsu coach, if I'm not mistaken, his name was Gabriel. I cannot recall his last name. However, after that, I started with Carlson Gracie, um, and I was working with Lazaro, uh, from, uh, from, uh, he's actually one of the guys that, uh, graduated from Buyu, um, which is Carlson Gracie right here on Bird Road and 152, if I'm not mistaken, or Miller. And then, um, after that, you know, I've just been doing jiu-jitsu ever since. And when I was in Evolution, that's where I met Josh Firebaugh, which he's a, a pro fighter. You know, he's been teaching my striking ever since, and he's been my day one ever since then. And, you know, he's he's taught me a lot, and I'm looking forward to, you know, keep keep moving forward and learning. And I honestly, I want to become a UFC champ, you know. And right. I know I'm going to do it if I keep, you know, applying myself. I just, you know, got to keep working hard. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I love it. Um, and tell, tell the people about that. Uh, what would you used to do for $20? Uh, where, where, where would you oh. fight? <laughs> oh, in high school, man. Yeah. In high school, a lot of the guys, they loved going into the bathrooms and, uh, fighting for $20 here and there sometimes. And I, I was always the first one to, to step in there and, and not care about it. So I even got suspended two times because of it, which was <laughs> funny, but you know, it was, it was a great experience. Oh my gosh. I love that story. And it's so crazy now to think about it that, uh, you know, and nothing to them, but a lot of the fighters, you know, they're, they're complaining about getting 12 G's to show and 12 G's to win. And then, you know, th this is us back in the day grinding for 20 bucks to get the win. You know what I mean? It's just times have changed. Um, but you, you said a lot there to unpack and I definitely want to start in a couple things. You said, so, okay, your grandpa was, you know, a boxer, champion boxer. Or, and then you said Correct. you got into wrestling. What is, you know, what's your go-to? What's your favorite? If you, if you had to stand for 15 minutes and uh, box it out, or you like to grapple and, and, and get in tight with somebody? Well, in my strengths, my strengths are wrestling and jujitsu. Okay. I, I love the ground. I love being on the ground. Um, I've been try I've been improving my uh, my striking for the last two years. You know, straight going to more striking classes than than jujitsu because since I'm already strong, I want to work on my weaknesses versus my strengths. But you know, if it, you know, whenever it comes down to it, and I can take it to the ground, I'm gonna stay on the ground. That's what I love. And I'm, I'm short, so my, my reach is not that long. So <laughs> regardless, I'm, I'm I'm going I'm going for the floor, man. That's 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 my strength. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, we've been talking a lot about it through the thread of the podcast over the last two months, and especially, let's just throw out bantamweight, right? You know, everyone's 135 pounds. Usually everyone's in that same height, uh, a little bit reach now and then. But at the end of the day, Danny, like, it's so much mental. It's so much of the work you put in. It's your cardio, uh, just because that's what it is. Everyone is the same weight, around the same body. Uh, you know, when you get to that high-end level, you're fighting for championships. You're fighting badass fighters. They got good technique and skill themselves. It's uh, at the end of the day, it's, man, when you put your head to bed and uh, the, the work you put in. And it seems like, you know, you're putting in that hard work and you're ready to get that title on July 12th. Yes, sir. I'm ready for it. Looking I, forward to it, man. I love it. I love it. Another thing you mentioned about your, your daughter, um, you know, like I said, we, uh, we got two boys, older boys. Uh, my wife wanted one more girl. We tried one and we got twin girls. So, uh, you know, we're busy wow. at the house. 
Um, and I always ask this because uh, I'm a huge component of mixed martial arts. Uh, I love it. Um, you know, we well, there's a gym here in uh, town, Pete White Boxing, that my boy, boys go to. I'm trying to treat them up right, you know, get the, get the jab going. Um, for your girl, though, would you be a pro or would you be con trying to teach your daughter uh, MMA skills? And if she wanted to be a fighter, would you support that? Well, the funny thing is, um, when she was born, as she was growing up, right now she's five years old. I have two daughters right now. They're both five. Uh, I have one with my with my wife and my actual daughter, which is uh, my my daughter and my stepdaughter, which is my wife's daughter. Right, uh, right. Both of them, they they love coming to practice with me. I take them to practice every now and then. Ever since I was a kid, my daughter actually she would stay there and she would watch the USC fights with me, and she would she loved it. So, you know, every now and then when I get the chance to take them to the practice, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm towards teaching them how to, you know, how to have self-defense, how to know how to protect themselves. Because right now, how times are, times are crazy. So they need to know how, you know, to defend themselves against any crazy guy that's out there. Oh, for sure. Absolutely, man. Uh, Got to keep, keep them protected. Uh, what fighters, what female fighters do you watch today or even back in the day, even, you know, Ronda Rousey broke through that glass ceiling. But, uh, you know, we're a huge Amanda Nunez's fans here. Um, you know, Wei Lee's amazing. What female fighters would you definitely want to show your girls? Be like, guys, you got to watch them. Like, these are the best of the best. Um, to be honest with you, um, it's between Ronda Rousey back in the day, even though she's she's out the game right now. But I, you know, I, I like her judo. I've always been a judo fan and a wrestling fan, obviously. So right. uh, that would be her. And then if it was if it came to striking, she took a big L to Holly Holm. So and honestly, Holly Holm was is a beast kickboxer. So that's somebody that you know I would tell him you know to analyze their moves and stuff like that to to see where where they go. Man, I like that. Those are two good ones. Those are two all timers for sure. And I love the new. There's like a new crop of great female fighters, and it, they're just getting started. Like imagine in 2030 where the female divisions are going to be. The girls are just getting better and better. It's going to be out of this world. Uh, but you're fighting XFN, uh, main event, and like you said, one thing, uh, I've been another pro, com, um, very pro here on Fightpin as, you know, we're based here in Daytona Beach, Florida. We're big Florida guys, big MMA guys, like we said. There's so many great organizations here in Florida to give you guys the, uh, you know, the platform, uh, get you guys some wins, amateur wins, and then hopefully turn pro, go to UFC Fight Pass, and then fight for UFC. Um, you know, what do you say about that with so many great, uh, you know, organizations here that can give you that platform? I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You cut, you kind of cut off. I apologize. Oh no problem, I, brother. I was just talking about the platforms here, the great organizations, uh, the MMA um, events here in Florida. Oh okay. Um, well, XFN. I, you know they've been growing a lot. I've, I've known Daniel XFN um, since he actually first started. I haven't had the chance to fight for XFN until now because I, I was fighting for Combat Night. Uh, MMA, which is another great organization, man. They're doing a lot of great things. They're, you know, they're motivating us and teaching us how to, how to be, you know, professional fighters, which is what I look up to. And, and the good thing is, is all of them uh, at least come from a background of fighting. So, you know, at least, you know, they, they know where we're coming from, the struggle that we go through, the, you know, all the hard work and stuff like that. So I think it's a good thing that, you know, that they're doing us for doing that for us as amateur fighters. That way we're prepared when we go into the pros. Not like back in the days, you're just, you know, jumping into the cage, you know, going against somebody that, you know, maybe way 10 times, 10 years, you know, way more right. advanced than you. Right, right. Yeah. Like, if and that's all about it. it so much is uh, matchmaking. You know what I mean? It's just uh, yeah. even your skill level. But if you go against a veteran, you know, uh, even 28 and they got, you know, 25 fights, that's a hard that's a hard battle. They know the cage and all that. That's just uh, so if they match up well, that's a big component for sure. Uh, another yeah. uh, really th intriguing, you know, topic is with there's no fans in these stands, right? Uh, the UFC, yep. the Apex Center has been no fans. We just saw that insane great fight with Poirier and Hooker a couple weeks ago it was amazing. But uh, how do you feel about fighting with no fans in the stands? Um, it's 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 pretty it's pretty funny because I was just talking about that earlier with my buddy. It's like sparring. With, uh, it's like sparring with referees and your yeah. corners. <laughs> right, you, right. You're, you're literally just, it's just all of us in, in the cage, and that's it. There's nobody else out there. But it sucks because, you know, my family and friends, they, you know, they, they support me and they wanted to go out and see me. But it is what it is, man. They'll catch the next one. 
For sure, for sure. More to come for uh, Danny LaRosa. Um, you know, yes, we're, uh, we're coming through the pandemic. Hopefully we're on the other side. I know it's been picking up a little bit, but hopefully uh, everyone's staying safe out there. We can try to get through this as a, you know, as a state and city and the country and all that. Um, during the quarantine, what has something that you picked up on? Have you trained more? Uh, has there been a TV show that you've been all in? Uh, I was all in on that uh, The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan show. Oh, my God, I loved it. It was uh, watching him growing up and then kind of seeing the behind-the-scenes stuff. So I was all in for that. Has there? What have you been uh, more into during the quarantine uh, months? Well, to be honest with you, man, to, uh, I've actually been training a lot more. And on top of that, um, I run a business now. Uh, I run a plumbing supply, so I'm literally providing all the materials here in uh, South Miami, uh, in Florida, in Kendall area, to all the plumbers, you know, here, uh, from here all the way to West Palm. So I've been literally just building my business, you know, uh, building my family up, trying to, you know, trying to get more money, make sure that my family's stable, you know, that way when I get to that point, I can just lay back, watch my business grow, and watch my career grow, which is what I love. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, uh, speak on that. Uh, you know, here's a platform for you. Definitely uh, throw out a phone number or a website, how people can kind of contact you to try to create more biz for you, my man. Yes, sir, guys. If you guys are looking for any plumbing supplies, you know, plumber whatsoever, you guys can either reach us at 305-216-5107 or you can visit us our, our website, plumbingsupplyusa.com. Man, I got it. I got you. Uh, man, I can't wait. Main event in XFN. Uh, they're a great organization down there in South Florida, putting up a lot of great fighters in the last, you know, 16, 18 months. Danny, man, we can't wait, man. We're so pumped for your fight. Uh, last question, uh, especially almost fight week coming soon for you. Uh, prediction, where do you think the fight's going to go? Do you think it's going the distance? Do you think it's going to be early? What's your uh, take on the uh, main event fight? All I know is I'm taking him into the waters, and I hope he has a huge gas tank because I'm going to make sure that I'm going to win either by choke or I'm going to take him down some way, somehow, and I'm going to win on the floor some way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get it in there. There's no, there's no questions, no doubts about it. I've been training my ground. I've been training my takedowns. So you better be ready. You better be ready for the deep water and for a shark. There we go, getting the shark ready. Two bless, main event in XFN, bantamweight championship on the line. My man, uh, can't wait. Uh, You got big fans here, Fight Bananas community, and we'll talk to you real soon. We'll talk to you after your fight, my man. I appreciate you, Dave. Shout out to you and Fight Bananas. Have a good day, man. All right, brother. All right. All right, guys, there we go. What a great conversation. Main event, Bantamweight Championship. I thought it was the co-main, but my guys, uh, my fault. Main event, uh, XFN 29, July 12th. Cannot wait. They are putting on some great shows. Uh, everyone in Florida put on some great shows. I cannot wait for the future. And it's, I love uh, planting seats. That's what we're doing. Because all these guys that we've been talking to in Florida, uh, they're, they're blowing up. Tell me in the last two years how much talent has come out of the state of Florida in the UFC, uh, Bellator, PFL. Just It's blowing up in a great way. Uh, Florida MMA absolutely taking over. I'll challenge any state. You ready? Uh, but, guys, I'm telling you, one of my favorites are about to come on the show. We got a multiple guest show. I like that. You know, we're doing things. We just, uh, we're just uh, creating content. You know us. One of our favorites, the think man of Fight Bananas, our guy, your guy, Cam Bennett. All right, guys, here we go. I told you, one of our favorites on Fight Bananas, the think man, the man behind the scenes, Cam Bennett, my brother, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome, just chilling, you know. Uh, Pensacola is the best place to be, man. Uh, nothing but training and uh, beach time. There we go. And uh, did you? It's a great day. It's a good Monday. Did you have a good July Fourth weekend, brother? Oh, definitely. Uh, I'm a grill master, actually. <laughs> if you didn't know, so just add to the to the list. Think man, fighter, student, grill master. Oh my um, goodness! Did you put so that? Did you have hot dogs with Krispy Kreme donuts? Just tell me the truth. I need to know the uh, answer. <laughs> no, no, because <laughs> I, I can't eat wild. I can't eat wild. We're we're looking to the future of the fight game, so I can't can't be eating nonsense right now. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. I didn't even know this. I was going to talk UFC, talking all that. But is there something on the horizon for Mister Cam Bennett? Uh, yeah, a few months months nothing uh official or whatever I, you know quarantine um 
and it's on me. I, I got undisciplined in uh, my eating and whatnot, and because uh, you know I love food, and genetics aren't on my side sometimes. <laughs> um, food loves me back, uh, but the weight's going down, and uh, a few months from now, yeah, it's it's looking like we might have something. So. There we go. There you go. You, hey, man, you got to ride your bike with uh, Devin Adams over there, so uh, lose I know. lose a couple. He's training for the Diaz bros. We're going to go on a triathlon or something like that. I don't know. I love it. I love it. But, uh, <laughs> man, so much fun stuff. Uh, for one, um, I want to talk about kind of we're in the middle of the year. It's been a weird, wacky year, of course, with the corona pandemic for MMA and for everyone in particular. But uh, I kind of just I have a couple mid-year things I want to chit-chat with you about. Uh, UFC 251, Fight Island this Saturday night. and But first and foremost, uh, I want your take, your thoughts when you're watching Dustin Poirier and Dan Hooker just ha- put on one of the best performances of their careers. It was amazing. I loved that fight. You know, I was watching the fight, and um, at one one moment I was just like, you know, I don't really care how the scorecards went because it was just such a good performance by both men. Um, I'm a huge Dustin Poirier fan, so obviously, well, I mean, I wanted him to win, and I- I'm glad he got the W. But Hooker put out a performance, and two chins, man. I Those shots were vicious, um, and they just kept eating them and uh, giving them, and I was I was just mind-blown. It was such a uh, awesome fight, uh, just a war, and I can't wait to see what uh, Poirier does. Um, I, I mean, I guess we're kind of watching to see what uh, Khabib and, and Justin do. Right, right. Um, because, I mean, Justin gets the job done, and uh, obviously I would say Khabib needs the immediate rematch because the man's 28 now, and um, nobody's beating him. So so if Justin gets the job done, that should be a rematch. But, uh, I mean, you could look at uh, Poirier and uh, Justin, too. There, okay, I love that you said that, and um, we'll definitely take it real quick before we get, do future with that. Is I, I'm the same way. I was watching the fight, and it was just I turned into, you know, and usually now I'm like studying it and writing down notes because we we talk about it and blah blah blah. But like I kind of it felt good to get lost in watching the fight. I was like. Wow, I'm I'm just happy. I'm rooting for both men. I'm hoping for uh, safety for both guys, but just watching an absolute war. And you kind of forget about the scoreboards or who do you think's winning at what time. It was like mid uh, round through the fourth. I was like, I don't know, but I- I'm happy that I'm watching this, and it was just great. And especially. Here at Fight Bananas, like, um, you know, NBA's off and NFL is still not on a hockey and all this stuff. And it's like MMA, man, we're like cranking out shows week after week. It's just, it's, um, it just feels good. It feels good to be all in with MMA and, uh, uh, kind of, it's like, it feels like one win for the home team. You know what I mean? So, um, definitely. And then, the fight world keeps moving. Exactly. And then, kind of going into the future. And I love that you brought up Gaethje. I'm not a conspiracy future guy. I'm pretty, a, B, and C. Uh, I'm just that's just who I am. That's just how I'm built, right? But there is a part of me that I think the UFC wouldn't mind having Gaethje win, and just I know this sounds crazy, moving off Khabib off the title. Like uh, I and actually I don't know if you heard a couple of podcasts ago. I mentioned this, and I mentioned like about Habib and Connor and I love them. I love them both and if that was the main event, I'm paying money and it would be great for the podcast cuz we'll yeah, talk about it over and over again. But there's just a part of me it's like I'm just over them uh like Habib only fights once a year and it's Ramadan and then it's injury and then he he you know they said he could have went against Tony but it wasn't the right camp and with traveling like Dustin and Hooker and Ferg and you know Gaethje, these guys they fight and uh, to me, they're good enough. There's not a huge, like, I'm not unhappy if Israel wasn't fighting and then the middle and the gas was the champion of the middleweights. I'd be like, eh, that's a little weak. You know, it is what it is. But yeah. with Gaethje as your champion, if Gaethje Poirier 2 is the main event for the lightweight undisputed title, I'm happy as cake. Like, I'm I'm all in with that. And for they, sure. Let's just move off. Like, how about, you know, they can do super fights with, they can do a Habib Connor, no title. Uh, they can try to get GSP. I think they would do that fight almost as a kind of a goat fight in a way, Habib and GSP, if they knew no title was on the line, that uh, if GSP won it, he would just vacant it. Or if Habib wins it, he might, you know, just kick it to the side. 
So I just I'm excited. I hope Gaethje beats him just for the division and just for kind of newness for the lightweights. I I, I would I, I would dig it. I think, um, and I've been saying this for months. I said it before. Justin fought Tony, um, but everybody thinks I'm crazy. Is I thought Justin Gaethje is the best matchup for Khabib. Actually, um, I think Tony's a very good matchup just based off his jiu-jitsu, off his back. Right. Um, you know that's going to be something that's shown. Elbows going to be thrown. He's going to be trying to cut him. Um, but Gaethje, and Gaethje knows it himself. I, I heard him say it on Joe Rogan's podcast. Khabib's wrestling is the best when it's on the fence. He gets you t- taking uh, steps back, and he's going to put you on the fence. He's going to wrestle you there. Gaethje doesn't take steps back. That's the thing. He only takes steps back if he gets – majorly rocked and even then at times he's still moving forward um and he's a patient gaichi now gaichi when he first came to the ufc i mean he's the king of violence he's gonna just keep coming no matter what and he's just gonna be slinging but now it's a more calculated patient gaichi you see what he did to tony i mean tony's a killer and he went in there and he didn't even look like he took a scratch after that fight um so I really, I believe that Justin's going to get the j- job done. Um, leg kicks are going to be a huge factor. He's going to chop up that lead leg, I, I think, and uh, he's going to stop the wrestling. He's going to make Khabib wrestle in the middle of the mat. I mean, you watch Al Iaquina. Al changes his stance to force Khabib not to shoot doubles but s- shoot single legs. And he got the first couple takedowns in the first few rounds. But later when it gets to the fourth and fifth, it's a lot easier to fight off those single legs. You get slick, um, especially if you change your stance. You make them shoot a low single. Uh, so I really do think Justin gets it done. I, I, I agree. I'm with you. And another great point that I wanted to bring up with the whole Gaethje and Dustin and uh, Habib thing is uh, Dustin is. He's one of my all-time favorites. Um, so I'm going to kind of – guess diss him here but i want to kind of put that out there uh you know met him down there at att when he was training talked to him for a minute i i just love everything about him his fight style um him being a dad and him just being all in with his girl and just there's so much dustin poirier diamond i'm a huge fan love me diamond right definitely but it was you know watching habib versus poirier and i've actually watched it two three times over uh even back in this corner he I hate saying this. He seemed defeated. He seemed uh, the the yeah. air was out of his wind, uh, out of the sails. It was just a weird kind of watching Dustin. Uh, like he was like looking at Coach Brown and was like, you know, Khabib's got me to the the cage. Like, what do I do? Like, it was just uh, I don't know. I he, he was off. Maybe it was just a bad night. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of those. We've seen Dustin's. You know, I think it's twelve out of his last fourteen. It's it's amazing. But if Gaethje, if that happens to Gaethje. Uh, me, I think Gaethje's like smiling. I think Gaethje's grittier. I think Gaethje's like, oh, oh, okay, you got me here. I'm getting up. I don't care. You can kind of hammer fist me on the way up. You can kind of get a couple shots in. No, nah, it's not going to hurt me that bad. I'm getting up. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I'm, I hope we can see it so we can kind of see where we're at and we'll go all in if they uh, finally make up that matchup, hopefully September or October. But I just, I don't know, I think Gaethje's, he's got a, a tiny bit more dog in him, a tiny bit like, no, Khabib, you're not doing this for 25 minutes. You won't do it. So uh, yeah. I can't wait. Uh, am I right on I, that? Do you, you see that? I think um, stylistically the wrestling's a big difference between um, Gaethje and, and Poirier, even though Gaethje doesn't actually use it. I think he's going to use it in a defensive way. Obviously, he's going to have to. Um, but I, I feel like Poirier, and I, I'm a huge Diamond fan. I've been watching him forever. Um, and I look up to him and I love watching him. I love everything about him. And, um, I just, I feel like it's different when you feel Khabib. I mean, I think, I think he'd admit that. Like, everybody thinks they're going to stop Khabib's game until they've gotten in there. And then it's just when you feel it. And you know, when you feel those guys at practice, and it's just different. You get in there. Um, I've been on the mat when I there's there's a different level. I went when I went to state down here in Florida or whatever state qualifier. When I went down there, it's just different from the district and regional level. Right. Um, right. And you and you think you're ready for it. You like and you really believe. Like I believed 
when I went down the state, I'm ready for this. I'm going to step on that podium. And I went down there, and <laughs> I got crushed. And it was just – it's just different. I mean, it's a different feel than what you think uh, mentally. Um, but I think Gaethje – and I really love Gaethje's mindset of you work hard, you do everything you can, and you just go out on your shield. And if it's not your night, it's just not your night. But – you're going to do everything in your power to lay it all out there and give it everything you got. And I really, I think Gaethje is an awesome matchup for Khabib. Me too, me too. Man, I love this talk. Cam Bennett, we're talking to him, the think man behind the scenes at Fight Bananas. Um, and I got a big question. I got a think question for you, and I'll give you my answer first to give you some time because you are a thoughtful gentleman, Mr. Cam Bennett. But um, <laughs> we're mid-year, we're mid in the year, 2020 told you it's been a wacky wacky year but um you know i love kind of awards and seeing what's what and there's been some incredible fights and the fighters i would love your take on who has been the ufc fighter so far of 2020 who's been the best fighter so far of 2020 and here's mine i'm gonna give you mine first maybe we'll throw out a couple different ones we'll have a good debate and we'll take it from there maybe we'll agree i don't know we'll see but to me this is I, there's like three or four different choices, but I looked at it, and it's like one of those things. It's like, wow, you, you kind of look back, and you kind of forget about both of them. To me, the fighter of 2020 for the UFC has to be Gilbert Burns. Uh, he's about to main event UFC 251 against Usman for the welterweight championship. I I don't know, and I kind of don't want to give you who I think is going to win that fight just yet because uh, the, the professor's coming on. We're going all in 251 with the breakdown. <laughs> but... He defeated Damian Maya and T. Woodley, uh, two just iconic, legendary welterweight, you know, uh, guys who've been around for like ever. They've got fifty combined wins. They, these are just not, you know, flash in the pan or guys that kind of had a hot month. These guys have been all timers for you know, literally five, seven, eight years in the UFC. And for Burns to kind of win, not once but twice, and and how he won it too, in in really, really great fashion. To me, Burns is the fighter so far of 2020. That's a yeah. I mean, that's a very valid uh, option. I mean, here's here's my thought: is uh, Burns is out there, especially if he gets the job done against Usman. I mean, that's that's a heck of a lineup in just one year. I mean, my uh, um, Woodley and then Usman that would just be killer. And heck, he'd probably fight. I would assume one more or two more times by the end of the year, uh, the way he fights. Um, so that's a good choice. And I think the my second choice or whatever that could be offered up would be Gaethje. I mean, yeah, he hasn't fought that many. He's fought, what, once this year? Right. Um, I believe, and that's Tony. But you think if, if he beats Khabib, I mean, that's just two fights, but still. That's the boogeyman of the 155 pound division, 12 fight win streak, and he snaps it. Then, if he beats Khabib, he puts the one, and he's 28 and one. I mean, 28 men tried, and they all failed. Right. And you right. have Justin Gaethje come in, and he does that. So I would say it would be a toss up between those two. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have to have the volume of uh, of some of these fighters in the past that have had um, fighter of the year uh awards um but i mean just two fights but it's the boogeyman and it's it's the eagle i mean it's khabib nirmaga made off the man who wrestles bears um so those would be my two picks uh for fighter of the year oh uh, i love the gaethje one he was one uh gaethje was one dustin was one uh when you just have those all-time performances uh one of the best fights ever and to me gaethje wasn't one of the best fights ever it was one of the best one-sided performances uh i remember yes. when dillashaw squashed burrow uh i remember mm-hmm. when cody no love def- just went through dominic cruz it was just like yeah you're right tony's been undefeated for seven years 12 and 0 just one of the all-time greats especially in the lightweight division and uh, he, he smashed him. He, he looked amazing. And if he can beat Habib and Ferg in one year, it, it's one of those things. It could go down as one of the best years ever. You're right. It could just be two fights. That's all he would need. Uh, Adele. Adele puts out a CD every seven years. But when she does, it's like the best CD ever. And she wins <laughs> Grammys. So, I, you know, there's the analogy for you guys. Justin Gaethje's at the Adele of the music industry. But um, for, for now, until he fights Habib, 
uh, Burns to defeat Woodley and yeah. uh, Maya. And I can't wait, man. UFC 251, Fight Island. He's the main event. And, uh, you know, our guy Mike Davis, an Island Fights vet, um, you know, Gilbert Burns against Mike Davis was a good fight. And that was at 155. Mike fought him on nine days notice, eight days notice, whatever it was. And now to see Burns is in the main event of Fight Island uh, 16, 18 months later, it's like, I, I, I talk to all, you know how many fighters I talk to literally just on the daily. It's like such a huge, um, you know, motivation. It's like, guys, you can turn the day, you can, everything can turn around in 18 months. Like everything, you know? Definitely. You can be in a completely different spot. I mean, and heck, that performance of that fight with uh, Mike and uh, Burns, that says a lot about Mike, um, especially to. Burns is, and I I think it's going to be a very competitive fight, Burns and Usman, because when I watch Burns, and especially when he fought Woodley, it kind of seemed how Usman fought Woodley. Um, that's the game plan to to beat Woodley. I would say it's just constantly pressuring him, but um, they they're very similar. I mean, I give Burns the edge in jujitsu. Obviously, he's a right, he's a right. world champ. Um, but it's I just think it's gonna be a heck of a fight. They're very similar in styles of the uh, I, I agree and can I think it's a Covington Usman fight. I think Burns knows, of course, because they, they you know were training partners and especially at the weight class and all that. Burns knows Usman can hold you and wrestle you and grind you for twenty five minutes. And then Usman knows that Burns can literally submit you out of any spot in two seconds. So I think both of them are like, okay, I respect you. You respect me. All right, we're going to bang for 25 minutes. I, I, that's where I think the fight's going to go. Definitely. I, I think that, too. I think it's going to be really good. And, uh, and you know, I, I see once in a while on social media people are like, oh, well, Burns got knocked out by Hooker at 155 or whatever um, and, and saying – all that stuff. Um, but I'm like, as we said, things can turn around in 18 months. And um, also, I mean, people don't take into account cutting weight takes right. a little bit out of your chin at times. Right. Um, and especially, he traded some bombs with Woodley. I mean, Woodley doesn't hit soft. Um, and he, he dropped Woodley, too. Uh, so he's got pop in his hands. And I really I think it's going to be a better fight than probably Colby and um Usman. uh so I, i'm just i'm pumped that whole card's insane so wow i'm psyched yeah me too man ufc 251 i cannot wait uh i haven't decided if we're going to do something live that night or or there's a part of me that wants to because it's so big but then another part's like i just i want to sit and enjoy and just watch it for three straight hours and then uh maybe podcast afterwards or you know over the weekend but uh my man is there anything else what else you got for you uh you have a think question for me Hmm. <laughs> no, not right now. Okay. I mean, are you coming to uh, Island Fights uh, July? Absolutely, man. July 25th, Island Fight 63. I will be in the building taking pictures. We're doing live interviews. Uh, we got the weigh-ins earlier, but then I don't know if, you, uh, if you're if you coming. I hope you are. The night I, I will be in the building. I will not be partaking in the fights, right. but I will be there. And then also, Cam, the night before, we're going to Mississippi, uh, July 24th. We just heard that our, our main man, heavyweight Dylan Kleckler, is in the co-main event. And we got Jim Allers yeah. in the main event for the championship. So uh, Mr. Dean Toole and myself, we're running out to Mississippi Friday night to watch that fight. And then coming back Saturday, it is going to be a full weekend of fights. I cannot wait. Definitely. Big bros fighting bare knuckle, man. I, I haven't seen him in a minute, but, yeah, I'm pumped for uh, Dylan. Um, super psyched. I love talking to Dylan. Dylan and I became training partners for a little bit uh, when he came over to Remedy. So I'm just I'm stoked for him. I'm excited to watch that happen. Uh, Island fights is gonna be great. Um, hopefully, there's uh, I mean there's gonna be killers. Uh, hopefully, some future stars appear. Um, and I'll be watching some fights in my weight class and uh, keep an eye on them. Um, so I'm I'm pumped to watch some of these fights. 
Oh, man, I cannot wait. That's going to be a big weekend. So, yeah, we'll definitely we'll talk to you before then, or maybe we'll set up something that weekend. Uh, yeah, July 24th, Bare Knuckle FC 11, uh, Kleckler versus Tate in the co-main event. Heavyweights uh, main event, the first 155-pound title, Jim Allers versus uh, uh, Luis Palomino. And then, yeah, Island Fight 63 the next night. Tons of stars. And one thing I love about it so much, Cam, and you can definitely uh, you know say it as well, I love when there's an Island Fights event, how many um, fighters that used to fight for Island Fights, you know, now bona fide UFC superstars, they all come out. Uh, it's it's yeah, such a good atmosphere. So many people are there. So many great fighters are there. So it's going to be another amazing, uh, you can say it's going to be another Bananas weekend that weekend definitely, in July. Definitely. <laughs> Cam, man, always appreciate talking to you. Um, the Think Man behind the scenes, Cam Bennett, Fight Bananas Podcast. My main man, have a great day, all right? Yes, sir. You too, man.